fish and welcome to another edition of Dan's Fishing Tales. Well, you know, here a while back I told you about this new Z-Man rod. This is a 5.4. There's going to be a 5.10 in it as well. I'm really anxious to try that 5.10. The 5.4, though, has been surprisingly good as far as backbone. It's got fast tips, good casting. I did end up, though, putting 8-pound test braided line on here instead of the nano fill but i didn't have the nano fill i wanted for one reason but the braided has worked pretty good as long as i stay with eight if i start going a little bit more just doesn't seem to do right but uh, this has been working real well i've caught a lot of fish on it and we're going to be fishing it today to show you what happens but we're also going to be talking about the trds and this happens to be a trd tube right here uh, look at, there it is right there that's the TRD tube, and I use the shroom head on this right now I am. Now, I'll use different heads or different style hook or whatever, depending on which one I use. And I'll show you the different types of TRDs here, at least the main ones that I'm going to be using right now. These are the smaller one, the finesse ones. And here's a regular TRD up here. Here's a TRD tube, and down here's the TRD craw. Now the shroom heads, I'll use those when I'm wanting to do, well, I'll use them with finger jigging, but basically it's when I'm letting them go all the way to the bottom, stop flipping them up and letting them go all the way to the bottom so that they land on that flat head. And I'll show you again here and hook this. It's got a flat head right there. You can see that right on that flat head. Okay, and it's also got a, a regular keeper spike on it rather than the uh, you know like you have a lead collar type thing this one has the wire keeper on it and uh, if I could show you one here real quick we'll open this up um, get it out keep them right in here that way I got everything together and right there you can see that little keeper barb down here I like that because that holds in there and goes into these Elastic a lot lot easier um, And the other type you just don't want to use those collars with these Another type of a thing I use but on the bigger TRDs and any of the other type of things like a fatty Z something like that is this right here This is the uh, Daiichi bleeding bait copperhead now the copperhead has got that screw on it and that goes in a lot better than if you use a normal hook like I'll use a a pro X now, a Pro-X hook is a fantastic hook, but any type of hook that's just a regular worm hook, a sprout, whatever, just don't work with this Elastec stuff. It does for a couple of fish, maybe, but then it's like it wears a hole in it, and it'll slide around. Just It just doesn't, the bait itself is in perfect shape. It's just right where that hook goes. So I use this, and I screw the head in, and it holds it much, much better, and you can Texas rig it then. But we're not going to be doing that today. Oh, and also, another head that I use, which has got the same type of a keeper barb that I just showed you, is an H2O head put out by B Fishing. Now, why would I use the two different heads? If I'm going to do a lot of finger jigging with the TRD, or real fast, what I call jerk fishing, which we're going to do today, even though I got the shroom head, if you're doing it like this and jerking it along, which you'll see me doing, then I would prefer the H2O head because it's got a rounded head. It's just, it's just different. It's a different setup. It's just not this type that you have with the flat head that you're going to let set on the bottom. Anyway, that's what I use with those three type of things. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to start fishing with this and uh, hopefully catch something. As you can tell, it's pretty windy out here, but we're going to see what we can do. Uh, it's a good thing I've got a spinning rig here because casting into this wind. And you can see how good that rod casts right there. We'll see what we can do with this. I mean, I was into the wind and with that fast tip, and I'm using probably about an eighth ounce, I guess. Uh, that's it. And there's one right there, right there. First, first thing, first cast. They really hit this this uh, little TRD tube. They hit it so doggone hard. The problem is, is they they get it down in them. But this one isn't hooked that bad. It's just that 
he did take it all the way. He didn't swallow it though where it's going to injure him. It's into the hard area. Okay, we got that one out. I released him. And uh, he went in. He was in very good shape. But that shows you just, I mean, the backbone in this thing's really something. We're going to do this again now. I'm going to cast right into the wind so you can see. Now that was a decent cast to cast into the wind like that. Of course, I've got a bowed line. But you notice I'm doing that quick jigging I was telling you about. It's not, it's actually kind of a combination of finger jigging and quick jigging. Because i got my finger down here where I'm finger jigging the rest of it. But with the bow and the line, it uh, makes it tough for both. Now I might be able to set that on the bottom some, but I want to test out the weeds here first. And that's the thing. So let's try up here. There's a little bit of a weed edge out there. I'm going to let this thing drift down because the, the wind, as you can tell, the wind is really hitting pretty good. We may even change locations to fish. I don't know. That wasn't all that big of a bass, and I've been getting some better ones. We have just had a tremendous front go through today, by the way. It, uh, so I'm going to try back in this bay. There's a little cove here. In fact, I'm just going to pull this along fairly fast, just finger jig, see if maybe I can get something to hit that way. This is one of those situations after this front. I'm really going to have to work to see what they're wanting. There's one right there. This one seems like a better fish. Definitely. Definitely bigger than the other one. Not huge, but showing you how... You can see how the rod's doing. That's what I wanted you to see. Very, you know, not a bad fish to do this. He's a keeper fish. If he's in a tournament, he would be a weigher right there. Now, that's not too bad. And it caught him right in the mouth, and I was finger jigging. So maybe that's the key. It's just going to have to be moved faster. Bass, probably around 16. So, uh, like I said, in a tournament, good enough keeper. I'm going to try back into that uh, little cove again, but I got the fish, and the last two fish, in fact, both of those were up close to shore, so I don't really know if they're holding that tight. Maybe, since that's two in the same type of location, there's some water cabbage along here, and uh, that is no longer out there. There was a huge amount of weeds here. Uh, there's one, there's another one. Same same area, right along that water cavity. Small bass, though. Very, very small bass. But it kind of shows me that that is where they're laying. Uh, yeah, that is a little one. So, since they're laying along the edge, I'm going to go to the edge more. There's one, and I got this one actually in a faster jigging, or not finger jigging, actually, I was really burning it, because I was going to uh, roll in, but he's not very big. But I was gonna reel in, and uh, by golly, he just outright smacked it, but again, not, he's not big fish, not at all. And I'm after something bigger. <laughs> The main thing I wanted to do, though, is to show you how this new, well, it's called a Druze rod, actually. It's, it's been developed by another person. But uh, it is, well, like they said, it's the ultimate Ned Rig rod. Um, and basically, that's what we're fishing is Ned Rig. I'm just not fishing it the way that you would figure fishing a Ned Rig. And it's definitely not hitting that way. There's one. Maybe I spoke too soon. I used it like it, and I got one. And he's a little better fish. Probably about the same size as we had before, but he, you see, we got some jumping out of him. 
And this is what I wanted you to see. See how that rod handles that fish? And as I said, that's not, well, that's not too bad of a fish, really. Um, there, there we go. And we got him right in the mouth. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, as I said before, these little hooks can sometimes be a pain, but that's a decent fish, without a doubt. I mean, if I was in a tournament, he'd be in the live well. Or he'd be measured, if I was fishing a measurement tournament. Here's something I want to show you. Uh, show you up close. Now that lure has had several fish, as you've seen. It's also caught several fish. It's caught 16 just the other day on another lake. And it's still in good shape, all hooked together. It shows you how good this elastic stuff is. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, I've talked a lot about finger jigging, and that's what I'm doing here now. And one of the things I've always told you is that the rod is extremely important to finger jigging. Now, you can use any spinning reel. But the rod, the action of it, and I am very, very impressed with this Drew Z-Man rod as far as for finger jigging. It's got just the perfect tip action. I know what you can't see here, but uh, you can see what I do with my finger. And that's what I do to jump. Maybe you can see that rod jumping. I doubt it from there, but uh, that tip is just perfect. There's one right there. Just, you know, I think I've got a crappie here. Sure have. There's a crappie, guys. How about that? We got a crappie fishing for bass parallel in the same area. And uh, we came up with a crappie. It is. Not the biggest crappie, but a crappie. There we go. Oh, that was a little one. That could have been a crappie. There's one. Bass. Big one, but bass. That's all I can say. I switched locations again, as you can see. So uh, well, we're going to try it again here. But this is a little bit murkier. The grass carp been working here. In fact, there's one big one right up there. I see. So we're gonna, and the wind is blowing into this shore. So I think this could hold something, but I'm not gonna say for sure. I sounded like a weather guy, didn't I? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. There we go. Got one here. Not too bad. Not too bad of a fish at all. At least he seems that way. Maybe he's in the weeds. I need another one that really grabbed that. Well, anyway, got another one, and uh, this actually showed you what this rod would do, um, and it, uh, it performed very well. So did that TRD tube, tube Z, I should say. So, not displeased with any of it. This rod has been doing real well since the first time I talked to you about it. Uh, I've used it a lot. And that's what I wanted to do before we actually put it back on camera, is to use it so that we knew that it was going to be working. Before we went, though, I did want to show you this is the TRD, the straight TRD that I use quite a bit. In fact, this is one that I did have on. And it doesn't have any, I mean, it's just a, really a chunk of plastic. That's all it is. 
and where this has got that little tube part to it and with the little tentacles back here that flitter around and that's this is what's been here working and like i said this rod has worked well it did what i wanted to see it worked great for finger jigging it's got great backbone the fast tip is just super it's very sensitive it's everything you'd want in a rod and for a five foot four rod it's just absolutely unbelievable what it do it's it says that it's a medium light and yeah it probably is i mean it and it balances just right like this and, but there's one drawback that i will talk about and that's right here you have to tape it that's like the old rods now what i have used to tape it and i didn't want to throw that out this is an actual rod wrap that frable has and it'll stick to itself so it's not your regular tape and it makes it a lot better than that so until next time get out on the water and enjoy a great day of fishing